Beneath the rails that built this town, something new is moving. Steel meets soil, pressure meets precision. Every turn of the auger pushing forward beneath live train tracks, still in use today. Above, the sound of power and progress. Below, the heartbeat of connection. This isn't just another job site, it's a challenge. Because when you can't go over and you can't go around, you go under. Hopeyer moves the earth. Wells, Minnesota, a small southern town built on hard work, farmland, and the rails that once connected it to the rest of the world. Those tracks helped shape the town more than a century ago, and they're still active today, carrying freight through the same heart of wells that grew around them. But for this crew, those same rails presented a challenge. How do you connect a water main on one side of live tracks to the other without ever touching the line above? In a place built on connection between farms, families, and freight, this project keeps that legacy alive from the ground up. Here's what it took to drill beneath the tracks. Every project starts with precision, and this one was no different. Before a single auger turns, the crew digs down to grade, about 12 feet below the surface, the exact depth needed for the new water main. From there, alignment is everything. The horizontal auger boring machine is set in place, leveled, and aimed dead center toward the far side of the tracks. Because Holtmeyer Construction specializes in underground utilities but not drilling, they brought in a subcontractor with the right equipment and experience to handle the bore itself. Once the direction is locked in, the work begins. A 24-inch steel casing is driven forward, inch by inch, as the auger inside chews through the soil, pulling dirt back through the pipe and out the entry pit. The machine pushes forward slowly, steady pressure carving its way through the earth. As the auger turns, the displaced dirt travels back through the casing and spills out into the entry pit, where the crew piles it neatly off to the side. Only after the full section of casing is pushed completely into the ground do they back the auger out. Then they weld on a new length of casing, attach another section of auger, and send it forward again. They must make sure everything lines up perfectly before the next section of casing goes on. Even a slight misalignment could shift the direction of the push, throwing the entire bore off course. Precision here is everything. Each piece has to line up with the last down to the millimeter. As the welding crew works to attach the next section of casing, Another part of the team is busy clearing out the entry pit. Because the pit is so narrow, they can't use a standard excavator bucket. Instead, they use a specialized clamshell bucket, a tool designed to pinch shut as it's lifted, trapping and removing the displaced soil from the tight space. It's a coordinated effort, with both teams working in sync to keep the operation moving efficiently. That process repeats, drive, back out, weld, advance, until the casing reaches just short of the live train tracks above. They pause there overnight. Drilling directly beneath an active line comes with risk, and they weren't taking chances. The next day, they push through the final stretch, breaking daylight on the far side of the railway. What started as a hole beneath the town's rails was now a 24-inch steel tunnel, ready to carry a new connection through the heart of Wells. With the bore complete, Holtmeyer Construction stepped back in to take on the next phase, tying the new main into the city's water system. 
On the far side of the tracks, the crew prepared the connection point. They installed a new T-joint onto the existing water line, added a shutoff valve for future maintenance, and set a new fire hydrant, giving this stretch of town better access and reliability for years to come. Once the tie-in was ready, they turned their attention to the main itself. Crews attached a series of spacers to the water pipe, circular supports that clamp around the line with forearms extending outward like feet. These spacers keep the pipe elevated as it's pushed through the steel casing, ensuring it never rests directly on the metal. With everything prepped, they began feeding the new main through inch by inch until it broke through on the far side. the crew used a pulley system to carefully feed the water main through the casing. One end of a cable was wedged between a bar and the pipe, then run along the length of the main to the pulley attached near the entry pit. Connected to the excavator bucket, the system allowed the bucket to pull upward, inching the pipe forward into the steel casing. Once the pipe emerged on the far side, it was pushed directly into the connection point, eliminating the need for a sleeve and creating a stronger, more secure joint with fewer potential points of failure. Go ahead. Once the pipe was through and connected on the far side, the crew finished the final tie-in on the near side, completing the water main loop beneath the tracks. With the connection secure, they backfilled the trenches, stabilizing the site for restoration. A separate contractor later filled the casing with concrete, graded the road, and poured a new concrete surface bringing the street back to its finished state. Now, aside from a new hydrant standing sentinel by the tracks, there's little sign of the work that happened below. But beneath the surface, a new water main quietly keeps wells running strong. And that's what it took to drill beneath live train tracks and keep a community connected from the ground up. Hope fire moves, moves the, the earth. earth.